Hi, this is Nathan Miller from Proving Ground with part two of an Excel tutorial series aimed at how architects can begin to use a tool like Excel for the purposes of design. Um, where I left off in the last tutorial was with a pivot table that had a series of slicers and this uh, information was linked back to a master table of raw information uh, related to a building program and as you can see that this building program is made up of a series of departments, sub-departments, rooms, and some area information. So one of the things that we can do to start to expand on these concepts of pivoting the data, summarizing it, is to start to create a more graphical way of, of showing off this data using uh, inbuilt uh, charts uh, and graphs and, and other things that can be much more exciting in order to communicate uh, some of this data in, that's going on in the background. Um, as much as I like looking at a good table, uh, tables aren't too terribly exciting, so oftentimes we, we want to show off the data with, with something a little bit more graphical and, and engaging. Um, but before I get into making a chart, I wanted to point out a couple of things about these tables. Um, so you can kind of see as I'm kind of moving through some of this data, um, my pivot table is, is changing in size as I start to hit up some of these different departments. Um, so some of the things we might want to do just from a formatting perspective is ensure that these uh, pivot tables remain fixed. That way as I'm going through some of this information I'm not getting some, some strange uh, changing of sizes and, and things of that nature. So what I'm going to do is just do a quick settings check on this table. I'm going to go up to the Analyze tab and what you'll see for this pivot table is off to the left hand side some options. If I click on Options you'll see that there are options for layout, it's formatting, uh, totals and filters, display, and so on. So what I want to do in this case is just turn off the auto fit column width widths on update. And what this will do is it'll make sure that the column widths remain the same um, regardless of how the, the table is uh, changing with uh, respect to these slicers. Um, and there's other cool things that you might want to just take note of uh, for future reference in terms of how you might show grand totals of things, total up columns, total up rows, and, and other formatting things. Very useful stuff in this options uh, menu. And now what you'll see is that even though I'm changing between different settings, uh, those column widths are remaining the same. Um, that'll be useful as we start to build out a dashboard with, with different charts. I'm going to select all of my data and building a chart is very easy uh, inside of Excel especially if you have your pivot table set up like this um, the, the one thing that you just have to remember to do is when you go to the analyze tab just to find the pivot chart button and what that's going to do is it's going to take uh, your entire pivot table and give you some suggested chart layouts um, and depending on how much data you have, these charts can become rather intense. Um, for right now, I'm just going to create a column chart. Drop that in. And what you'll see is that the, uh, given how much data I have selected, uh, this chart is, is rather intense with a lot of information going uh, from department to sub-department and to then the actual area. Um, but one of the cool things to note is that even though I... Uh, have created this chart and it's got too much information here, um, I can start to pare down the information using my slicer. So I'm just going to click on Lab A and it's going to update that chart to where I can now just see all the spaces, uh, departments, and sub-departments related to, to Lab A. And um, as I start to cycle through uh, the different labs in my project, it's going to display different, um, different information for those labs. So it becomes a very powerful way for me to start to, you know, really start to take apart this, this data set. And if I start selecting, again, multiple labs, um, those labs become um, displayed in my chart. So one of the things I can do here is start to build out a series of different charts using the same data set. So I might want to have my data displayed as a bar chart in one case but then I also might want a pie chart to go along with it. So I'm going to select my pivot table again, 
and go to the Analyze tab and choose Pivot Chart. And instead of the Column Chart, I'm going to go down to the Pie Chart. And the Pie Chart is going to display the same data. It's going to be linked back to the same table, but it's going to display it in Pie form. I'm just going to pull that down. Maybe I'll just kind of keep it off here to the side. A little formatting here, move that up. And again, if I start slicing through this information, you can start to see that now my pie chart and my bar chart are, are updating along with it. So I've started to mock up and map out a user interface really for my for my data, all linked back to this, this raw information that's uh, coming out of another workbook. So there's all sorts of different things I can start doing with charts. Um, if you've ever worked with charts in Excel, you know that there's different ways that we can start to format these things, um, you know, make them look uh, graphically compelling. Uh, so for example, if I click on my bar chart, you can see that there is a design tab in my ribbon menu here. If I go to the design tab, you can see there's all sorts of different presets for how I want I can make that chart look. So if I start cycling through some of these, you can start to see some of the uh, different stylings that come inbuilt with Excel, some of which are uh, quite cheesy, uh, others others uh, that look quite nice. Um, you know, there's different options for having your, your data or your value actually um, provided um, on top of each bar. Um, there's different color themes that you can start to select and and go through here if you if you want to change change those up. Um, and the same thing is true of the pie charts. So if I click on the pie chart and start cycling through some of these options, you can start to see there's all sorts of of different ways that we can start to make this pie chart uh, stand out and and look a little different than than the the default presets. And these charts are also modifiable um, to where if you're not if you're not sure about some of these presets and I want to start to customize them a little bit further, um, I can, for example, click on these, these percentages that are displayed inbound of the chart. And if I double click on them, um, it'll take me to some options here in terms of formatting those data labels. So I might want to say, let's make these uh, best fit, um, which will kind of maneuver them and, and attempt to auto Auto arrange them to where you can see all of the labels very clearly. Uh, maybe you want to do them all outside end, um, and and so on. So as you start to you know build out your your charts, you can do all sorts of things with formatting to really make this look like a a dashboard that's that's presentable and something that you can start to interact with, uh, not only for your own purposes but maybe for the purposes of presenting out to a client. So you can all the same rules of Excel apply here. You can start to you know, select the background and uh, make make the, uh, the the background a nice clean white. You can start to remove some of the borders around the individual charts uh, just to make this this information pop a little bit more. So hopefully this provides some good context on how you can start to use pivot tables to mock up and create visualizations of your data. Um, and also tie those visualizations back to uh, a user interface um, that you can use uh, for your own purposes and, and also use to kind of share and present this data to clients. In the next tutorial, I'll look at a different data set and how we can use these concepts to create comparisons within a data set um, at, that can inform building performance.